Hello everyone, welcome back and in today's video we are going to be solving check your understanding question 23 from NLM. Now this is a very good problem. Also guys, I would like to know if the audio is better right now or was it b better earlier. Do comment down below what do you think about that and also do comment down below do you guys prefer a light background or a dark background. So with that, let's get into the problem. So we have a cylinder. So we have a cylinder that is being pulled slowly with the help of a long uniform rope lying on the horizontal floor as shown in the figure. So the pulling force applied at the end A is so adjusted that the length BC of the rope touching the cylinder always obtains an angle of theta. So this angle over here, it always remains theta during the course of the motion. And the length of the hanging portion CD always remains half of the length DE. So this length over here always is half of this length over here. The question is to find the coefficient of friction between the rope and the floor. Okay. Okay guys, so in the first line, they've given that the cylinder is being pulled slowly. So by extension, we can also say that the rope is being pulled very slowly, right? which essentially means we can also say the acceleration of the rope is going to be zero. So basically we can use sigma f equals zero uh, everywhere along the rope. And that's uh, you know how we are going to be starting out with a solution. Okay guys, so first let's draw the FBD of this part of the rope, DE. Okay, so again, we can use force balance. So at this particular end, Let's call the tension at end D as DD. Now, obviously, as the rope is slipping against the floor, there will be some kinetic friction force acting. Let's call it as FK. And we can directly write FK as the surface coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal reaction, which would be the mass of the part DE times G. So as we discussed earlier, the acceleration of this part of the rope must be zero, which means we can say TD equals mu MDE times G. Okay, so this would be our first equation. Okay, guys, so now let's draw the FBD of the section CD over here. Now at the ND, we determine the tension to be TD. Now at the NC, let's just assume it is TC. Now the thing is that TC is actually tangential to the cylinder at this particular point and the tangent would make an angle theta with the horizontal, right? So we can say this angle over here is theta. Now this will also have some weight of its own and we and it is given to us that the weight is actually half of the weight of the end DE, right? So we can actually write this as MDE by 2 times G. So now writing the force balance equations, we get these two expressions, TC and TD. So essentially what we need is the value of TC, right? So we can get rid of TD. TD, which is mu, let's call MDE as M. So this is going to be mu MG, mu MG, which is equal to TC cos theta. And TC itself is MG by two cos theta. This whole thing multiplied by cos theta. So as you can see, MG gets canceled out and mu becomes equal to cot theta divided by this is the answer to the problem now this so now let's take up an extra problem and that problem is that we have to find this pulling force f so for that we'll take the section the fpd of the part ac okay okay so this is the fpd of the part ac okay and this angle is given to be theta so let's just say we pull at end a with a force of f even the force over here the tension force over here will be f right so okay so if you observe the section bc the tension force tc will act over here i move this theta to over here let's say at some particular angle of alpha i take a differential angle of d alpha and i observe this particular element over here so it'll have its weight dmg acting in the vertically downward direction now this angle is alpha as well so as you can see the weight component along the rope is dmg sin alpha if i want f it is going to be nothing but tc plus this dmg sin alpha integrated over this part bc so what we are trying to figure out is integral of dmg sin alpha now dm i can uh, write it as lambda times dl right this is going to be integral of dl sin alpha so now this term over here dl sin alpha so let's say this is our element whose length is dl zoomed in and the normal to the element makes an angle alpha with the vertical which means the tangent would make an al angle of alpha with the horizontal so as you can see dl sin alpha is like the vertical projection of this length dl so if you integrate dl sin theta to throughout this um, element bc what you'll essentially get is this vertical projection of this part bc over here and as this angle is theta we can say this length over here is r cos theta so the vertical projection is nothing but r times 1 minus cos theta so now finally we can say f is nothing but lambda g times r1 minus cos theta plus tc. Now tc is simply m dash g by 2 cosec theta as we determined earlier. So now all you have to do is substitute this over here. Now in like if the question was to find the force then they would give you the mass of part de as some m dash and the mass of the total rope as m and then you can use the length constraint and you can simply say the lambda times the total length of the rope is m. You can also and you can also write the total mass as the mass of the part de plus the mass of the part ce which is m dash by 2 plus the mass of the part ab plus the mass of the part bc which is nothing but 
but lambda times r theta, right? And all of these is equal to small m. So m a b would be given and then you can get m as a function of m dash from here and then you can finally substitute it up here in the force expression. So and then you'll get the total force. So anyways, the calculations don't really matter. I wanted to explain the concepts here. That's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed the video, do like, share and subscribe. And that's it. Thanks for watching.